The street corner soapbox. <laughs> the street corner soapbox with Foul So a Willing Podcast Takeover. We're making a killing. Music to nightlife. Debauchery and street news. Serving it hot. We are some street dudes, movies and mayhem The craziest guests, words from chaos Get it off our chest, Rhode Island, worldwide Dark corners in all places Speak how we live, radio show, smoking aces Ladies and gents, for the people we're talking Take the show on the road, right where you're walking Yeah, that's right ladies and gentlemen Street Corner Soapbox Podcast Coming to you live That's right, boys and girls. Street Corner Soapbox. I'm here with my brother, Lord Willen. Yo, 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 yo. What's going on? And a very special guest, another a friend of both of ours, actually, Vagabond Rob. Vagabond Rob. What's up, boys? What's going on, bro? Nothing Not much. much. Let Nothing me, much. Uh, before we get started here, let's, let's just do a little plug real quick. Yeah. Um, Please subscribe to our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash street corner, one word, underscore, soapbox2020. You'll get exclusive content, help support the show, and uh, it's a good thing to do for us and for yourself. Yeah, we definitely appreciate it. It keeps the podcast Absolutely. going, yes. and we got a bunch of merch coming We have soon some too. big plans. Yeah, we got merch on the way, um, streetcornersoapbox.com. Follow us on Instagram. Um, it's SoundCloud, yeah. Apple Music, yeah. any any YouTube, any digital platform. All the digital platforms, uh, Spotify as well, um, anywhere you can listen to podcasts. But follow us on Instagram. Give us a like on Facebook and Share sign up shit. to our Patreon. And with that being said, Vagabond we, got homie, we got the homie Vagabond Rob. A.K.A. Rob G., my brother. Thank you for coming in. You drove literally across the country to come here. Yes. 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 Um, so, uh, how's life on the road? It's awesome. Uh, the road. Let's go- just give let's give a little backstory. For okay. You. Yeah. So anyway, let's, let's do the backstory. Right. We gotta, okay. So he was actually my UPS driver. <laughs> there you and go. he needed a place to stay, and then he just moved in. We became really good friends, and I introduced him to Chris. Um, and he got me through some some pretty rocky yeah, relationship. Yeah. So pretty much, I, I thought he Rob- also temporarily served as my attorney. <laughs> Always. Yes, he wasn't <laughs> not temporarily. I'm I'm permanently your permanent. Attorney, he's buddy. on uh, retainer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, we'll me and Rob go. We, yeah, we'll explain. <laughs> me and Rob go back. Um, he fell into tough times, and we ended up becoming good friends um, through a bunch of different crazy shit. And here he is. He ended up leaving in June, June fourteenth, fifteenth, June fifteenth. Yep. Um, yep. He left here, um, and he literally has been on the road, vigilante biker, fucking. Going out, I, I mean, I don't know, just camping out and shit and just seeing the sights and clearing his mind and everything. So I thought he would be a good guest to have on the show. Um, like I said, the I'm, stories I'm, are going to be there. And I'm, I'm I more want to. What's have, that? Have, have you been like Batman out there fucking <laughs> fighting crime while you're on the road? <laughs> he said vigilante, so I don't know. Yeah, I did no. say vigilante. <laughs> yeah, he did say vigilante. Um, I think it was just a cool <laughs> word to say with biker. Yeah, it just sounded yeah. good, right? Well, it you just know, sounds right. Vigilante's like a fucking. Uh, not a. I don't want to say a wannabe cop. No, but like yeah, someone I'm not who a goes. It takes the law into their own hands. Yeah, well, no. Um, well, I. <laughs> You're the opposite of a vigilante, right? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so pretty much. It? Huh? That's called. Well, well, you, well, that's we, called we gotta, an outlaw. We gotta, we gotta, actually, that's called. What an the outlaw. fuck is a vagabond? Yeah, Chris describe, knows. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Rob is the other Rob Falso has never is not familiar with the term vagabond. I understand that. You know, the the, the, the term <laughs> vagabond has been. Hold used on, we gotta Google it a lot. <laughs> a lot later. Yeah, give us the fucking uh, Wikipedia. Fucking you, no, it's, a, it's the it's the dictionary. Oh, dictionary you know, dot com. Yeah. Well, it's. Uh, is there a Wikipedia article though on I'm on sure vagabond? There, I'm sure there is. That's so, what this this episode is going to be. Just that whole thing. <laughs> it'll brought be me, me reading off a of Google. Brought much. to you by Wikipedia right, and yeah. uh, Google News. Which so, <laughs> uh, a vagabond is a person who wanders from place to place without a yeah. home or a job. Well, that fits you perfectly. Yeah. It's yeah, exactly. But gypsy. vagabond Rob but, sounds better than gypsy. Yeah, Rob. gypsy. I also <laughs> and, I, and I and I tested those with people. Right. So I asked people. I said, which one would you you know if you were going to watch a a show or a YouTube video or or listen to a podcast yeah. by a guy you know. Are you gonna want to listen to Vagabond uh, Rob, or are you? Gonna yeah, no, you to- no. That's yeah. definitely. I like Wanderer as well. I think you, you're Wanderer. definitely a Wanderer. Yeah, uh, maybe definitely. a Rambling Man down south. Rambling Man, no. Rambling Man. All my brothers. Not and, all uh, Wander are lost. Waylon Jennings. No. Definitely Rambling not. Man. I was born. You know in what? Man. I was I was lost until I got on the road. No, I right, really man. was. Well, that's your calling, bro. I really was. Um, this this became like a spiritual thing Word, for man. me. I dig that. Um, 
it has been the best year of my life. And it's shitty, Hell yeah, that's to, crazy. it's shitty to say that because it's 2020. I feel bad when I tell people that I've had the best year of my life. But yeah, but it's your life. Some people but, are having a good year, actually. Yeah. I, and, and I, <laughs> Despite you know, all the bullshit that's well, going on. Well, and I got to the point in my life where I'm going to eat. I know that the world is in a really bad spot right now, or at least our country is. And no, I'd say point, the world. I'd say the world. Yeah. And at this point, I need to make myself mentally happy and mentally stable and, and enjoy my, my time. Because I hit that 40 mark, you know, when I went to Sturgis. And it was... It, you know, people were like, "Oh, you had a midlife crisis," and I said, "No, I had a midlife awakening." You know, yeah, yeah man, absolutely. absolutely. I woke yeah. up. Yeah. I woke up and decided to just do me because for a long time, like Rob can tell you, the way we met was because of a relationship issue. I've had nothing but relationship issues. I've dumped myself into these relationships, and it's just been, it hasn't been good for me. You know what I mean? So getting out on the road and actually knowing me, you had a you. I mean, the the, the time you were here, it was a. I mean, it was a whirlwind. You, you. <laughs> I mean, you've had you had a lot of people pass away. Um, no, I've you I've, know yeah. you lost your mother. I, lo- I lose a lot. Of, that up. I lose but, a lot of people. Um, I, I've lost a lot of people recently. Yeah, well, you're finding yourself now, and who's to and say that, 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 was that, our, that was that was our forty? Talk. I mean, that's the thing about our society. Not to go down a rabbit hole, but everyone's like, you have to. You know, you have to be established uh, by by the time you're fucking this age, you have to be this and you have to have the house and the kids and the family and, uh, you know, the fucking 401k plan. And it's all real bullshit. And if you think that that's the kind of family I came from, right? My dad, you know, he's. Oh, your dad, your shout out to your dad. Your dad's fucking all. He's been, he's, he's actually sat right here on this chair. He has. He's been here. My dad's awesome. Um, I love my dad. He's. Love the military guy. And, uh, and he did 36 years in the Navy, you know, retired as a captain. But he wanted me to have that stability. He wanted me to have, you know, all that. That's that wasn't me for some reason. You know what I mean? Like you're not always cut from the same cloth. Yeah, you know what, sure. and, and I took a long time to realize that because I tried to emulate him, and because that's what I thought was expected. You know sure. I mean? And you were in and the I military. Was, and I was an only son. I was raised as an only son. I have a half sister, um, you know, but she didn't grow up with me. So I was basically raised as an only child, and I'm his only son. So. That made a difference. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, so why don't you give a little background before you pre uh, vagabond? Pre, <laughs> pre vagabond. vagabond. All right. So pre vagabond, you know, I grew up moving around a lot with the military. You know, with with my dad being in the military. Pretty much every two years, we were somewhere else. Um, I claim New Orleans as home because shout out to Nola. Yeah, Nola in the house. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Who Dope that? city. I've been there once. Dope city. Saints. I want to go back. Go Saints. <laughs> I'm not a Saints fan, but yeah, that's New fine. Orleans is a very dope city. No, I, lo- I love it. And I'm definitely going to be actually hitting there on my way down south um, pretty Shout soon. Shout out to my boy Ronnie Ford, man. He's, a, he's one of the homies from New Orleans. Good guy. Nice. nice. But um, So, okay, so you consider New Orleans to be your home? Yeah, Algiers, West Bank. Um, cool. Live there. And then I joined the Coast Guard there. Um, and then I went up to Michigan. And I did a couple years in the Coast Guard. And then uh, the military and I decided that I didn't like to listen to instructions, so I was no longer in the military. Yeah, shout out to not listening to instructions. <laughs> <laughs> A million percent. I'm, I'm right with you on that, man. You know, I, I tried. I did my best, and uh, it came to the point where – and to be honest with you, it wasn't just that I didn't like to listen. It was the fact that I got in a relationship. Go figure. Womp womp. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and once again, uh, you know, early on in life, because I, I signed up when I was 17. My dad signed me over. He was like, yep, you can sign up, you know, because normally you have to be 18 to do it by yourself. So he, he was ready for me to do something like that, too. And it was good for me, and it was a great experience, but it just wasn't for me. And then I became – I started going on my own direction. I started moving – you know, I went back to New Orleans for a while after the Coast Guard. I was working on Bourbon Street. Oh, nice. I, was, I worked at Razoo's, the Cat's Meow. Um, I used to go party at Oz, the gay club, just because they had the cheapest drinks, the best music. And, you don't have to pay for drinks at the gay club. Well, <laughs> maybe you don't, Rob. I don't, no, I do not. I, I know you're pretty, but <laughs> I don't, you know, I, yeah, I didn't have to pay for all of them, but I always had somebody with me to make sure, oh, he's with me. You know, and it's funny because at the door it says uh, straight ten dollars, queer five dollars. It says it right on the door. So we would we would lock arm in arm. How like, much is transgender? They so they're free. Back then that uh, was well. Now important. now that's definitely they yeah, definitely I'm have a sure transgender they have entrance something fee. Now, yeah, yeah, but they don't. They didn't have any. They have a third door. Seven bucks. Seven well, bucks. Seven, for seven. transgender. <laughs> <laughs> hey, seven, I gotta get seven dollars. You hear that, Dean? <laughs> 
somebody. So, um, so yeah, I worked down in New Orleans for a while, and then and then I kind of I I I got into uh, some bad stuff. You know, I got into drugs. I got in that you know drinking all the time because that's what Bourbon Street was oh, all about. Oh yeah, shout out to drinking all the time. You know, um, and. And then it kind of took me on my own little adventure that was normally attached to a woman, you know, every single time. Yeah. So you've been chasing a lot of skirt, it sounds like. Yeah, I haven't been chasing skirt. I've gotten with a skirt and then stayed with that skirt. And, and, may, and you know what I mean? Like, I was married for 10 years. Ah. Um, she was in the Air Force after I got out of the Coast Guard and went. I left New Orleans, went to D.C. And I was, I, that's where I started DJing, was in D.C. Yeah. Um, and shout out to the Crystal City Restaurant, the strip club that I first started at. Shout out. <laughs> um, but uh, I left there and went to Alaska because she, we got married. You know, uh, interesting Alaska, yeah. huh? Yeah, she was, Anchorage. You we, should go, Chris. You should move to Alaska. It's dark all the time. <laughs> You've said that before. I tell you what, <laughs> it is it is absolutely the the most gorgeous place you'll ever ever be, in my opinion. That's what but, I hear. But years like i was there for seven years and that wears on you you know and and with the divorce and everything the state just wasn't big enough for the two of us so uh i ended up coming back down to the lower 48 um which she's and the fact was it was just not made it wasn't a match made you know it wasn't it wasn't a good match and we both knew that so how did you end up in rhode island wow um here we go <laughs> <laughs> So um, I was living in, where was I living? Massachusetts. Um, and I was with somebody for five years. A skirt? Yeah, a skirt. Guess what? Another skirt. Yeah, yeah so many skirts. Seeing a trend. Um, so we were together for five years, and uh, after three, we moved in together. And we had actually met in recovery. You know, I, I'd come out of uh, uh, recovery for heroin. Oh, serious shit right there. Um yeah, I was addicted for like four or five years, and uh, I finally got to the point where I didn't want to die. You know, my last my last time, my dad found me, um, had to take me to the hospital because I was like shitting myself and um, definitely bad. Spot. I, I was I was in renal failure. They took me to South Shore Hospital, and uh, yeah, it, it was not a good situation at all. And uh, and I had let my life get to that point and. You know, I decided I didn't want to live like that anymore. So we met in recovery and we got together, which they say, you know, two addicts, you know, why not? That's a great combination. You yeah. know? <laughs> so uh, she ended up cheating on me or whatever. And I ended up we, we had a place in Pembroke and I was okay. I just I got pissed off and I was like, you know what? Fuck you. Keep the place. I'm out. And uh, I ended up coming to Rhode Island. Um, but I came with a chick. <laughs> <laughs> that so I <laughs> so I got I got out. You're of consistent. Yeah, yeah. It sounds yeah. like to me like you've been a, a vagabond since day one. Yeah, <laughs> right. For real. Yeah. You, that this wow. isn't even actually a fucking uh, life right. crisis. This is just this yeah. was. It's an awakening. This was already happening, like you said. But yeah. now you venture now, well, but deep now into I the biker world. Right. Well, now I realize it's a good outlet. Yeah. Well, now I understand. Well, it's a community. Yeah, yeah it, it definitely absolutely. is. It Shout definitely out to is. Uh, the company. I'll let you promote it. Oh, so bunkabiker uh, dot org. Yeah, we uh, we have a great community going on. A lot of people. He's that, actually the admin, <laughs> uh, moderator. I guess they call me. But yeah, one of the moderators. There's there's plenty of them. Uh, Z Traveler is actually our our main moderator and CEO, and she does a great job taking care of the community. But Shout out to Z. If you get a chance, you know, go on, check it out. Um, if you have the ability to provide, you know, hosting services, that's what people on that on that site do. They put their property up, you know, and they say you can come camp. Or I've even had people go as far as to let me stay in their fifth wheel or stay in their house with their children in the room next door. It's actually it's a the de most definitely amazing, big, big community. The most amazing thing that I've ever been a part of. And uh, everybody that I've met since I've started doing this. And I only found out about it when I left on June 15th. Yep. I hit up a guy that... Uh, he rides in a, in a riding club out of uh, Cranston uh, and uh, shout out to my IBEW guys. And uh, he told me bunk a biker, just check it out. And I jumped on and I, the first people I stayed with in upstate New York um, were the, just the sweetest people. And I whereabouts went, upstate 
Uh, it's called Colebrook. It's about 30 minutes east of Utica. Okay. Um, right at the foothills of the Utica. Adirondacks. It's, it's cool. such, such a gorgeous area. And the mountains there are just absolutely beautiful. But the first thing that this guy did was he walked, he, you know, we met in the, in the uh, driveway and we were walking into the house and he just turned it and he looked at me and he says, we don't have much, but what we have is yours. That's real. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? And that like hit me hard. It hit me really hard. Shout out to Chris Thrash and uh, his wife, Cindy Briggs. There you go. So, um, okay, so let's go back a little bit. So <clears throat> you got to Rhode Island uh, through your travels. Yeah, so I hooked up with, with this girl, and we came to Rhode Island, and uh, I began driving for UPS here, actually. Okay. And that's how, that's how we met. That's how me he and was, Rob he met. He was my so UPS how, driver. How long, how long were because you Rob, for? Because Rob is a serial Grouponer. <laughs> yeah. Rob, Rob orders I more Groupon and Amazon you than ain't lying. Yeah, anybody sure I've ever lying. met in my entire life. It's actually, it's actually a phenomenon. Rob goes on these sprees where he, he buys like fucking a million things. and I like gadgets, yeah. knickknacks. Yeah. Actually, custom I, shit. I had a bet with the guys <laughs> at, at the shop, and I was like, how many do you think he's going to get today? And I would always... You know, I would always get it right because I'd be like five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you would deliver his packages? Yeah, he, he would yeah. make it. That's a twist but, of fate, right there. But, huh? he, but and, he, and I was living next door. <laughs> yeah, he was friends with me, and I was telling him what's coming in. So then he was betting the guys that work probably money. And say, hey, he had the inside. He had the inside hey. scoop. Some of these guys are friends of mine on Facebook. I don't want them to oh, hear this. I'm always only kidding. I don't. <laughs> so um, how long were how long were you in Rhode Island for? Um. I think I was only here for maybe nine, ten months. Okay, so not long. Yeah, l- under a year. Okay, so you're, you're year. in Rhode Island, you're working, you're doing your thing, and so then all of a sudden you have this epiphany to say, you're, no. you're uh, no, no. So you <laughs> no. went through some shit, right? That's what yeah, happened. Yeah, I went. But through, let me ask you this so though, before went, that, uh, yeah. Let me just ask you. So you were, were you already into bikes prior to all this? Well, you had so a bike. I, I had right. the bike okay. at that time. So you're already a yeah. motorcycle guy. For for about six years. Okay, you cool. Know, so I'm you already, already yeah, yeah. So you already. It's not like you just said, "Oh, I'm gonna start riding bikes now." No, I mean, you were already. No, you were I had into one. It. I only wrote. I only rode it on the weekends. You know, when I wasn't yeah, working. when you had time and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, what do you ride? It's a Honda State Line. Okay. No, I'm not familiar, but cool. Yeah, it's it's a cruiser bike. Okay. You know, it's it's a heavy bike. It's a nice long bike. I like it. Cool. I love it actually. It hasn't failed you yet. I bought it with 1,500 miles on it, and now it's got 26,000. Oh yeah, well. so. <laughs> And that was two. Putting it to good work. Yeah. Definitely. So, okay. So you were already into the bikes, and you just, you know, you were working, doing your thing, and so how did you transition from doing that and then to to where you are now? So I got into the, some legal stuff with the ex. Well, with yeah, and the cops came to Rob's house a couple times. I remember that. <laughs> yep. Um, and they we were actually, look, we and, actually and, have a great rapport and, with them. Well, and okay. the, they actually love us. And <laughs> but the good thing was that um, they were looking for Rob, so they kept asking him. <laughs> yeah, same name. <laughs> and I was, I was always like, "Yo, what the fuck?" My my kid came down. He's like, "Dad, the cops are outside asking for you." I was like, "What?" And I was always like, "Never here," or I was somewhere like downstairs to where he just didn't tell him I was here. Well, allegedly <sighs> here. <clears throat> I don't know. What <laughs> So, um, so yeah, we, I went through some stuff with, with the ex and, um, it comes down to just people get, people get wound up when they get emotional, you know, and, um, especially when kids are involved, it gets, it gets kind of crazy. So, sure. um, no, I think, I think the, I mean, we talked before you left in June and, you know, this probably definitely was the best thing that you could have done. Yeah. I was, I was letting a lot of the outside issues and outside factors. I mean, and you, and you forget you, you lost your job yep you know and yep. then the covid yep. you couldn't get you know what i mean so well, was, people weren't honest, even fucking on, hiring on, but to be honest with you i can't say that that was a bad thing i got f- i don't think any of this was a bad thing. yeah i i don't know why but i think it was i think i think something a, stepped into my life it was a scenario that happened yeah. that made that forced your hand to make a decision right and you made a decision and now we're here six months five months later and you're telling us your fucking story bro it's fucking awesome wow so all right so you so you went through some shit here with your ex right. and then and then i i hooked up with this other chick okay <laughs> this guy <laughs> 
And uh, yes, skirt McGirt. <laughs> yes, uh, serial dater. I guess is yeah, what definitely. is what uh, That's what, it what my like. last ex called me as a serial. That's dater. what it sounds like. Um, so, at, well, it it was weird because after that five year relationship where she had cheated on me, I did, You know, I had such a big ego and such a big head, and at that point, I was pretty. I was still into my addiction and stuff. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, and I relapsed a couple times while we were together. So. She should have left me and fucked somebody else probably a long time before yeah. that. You know what I mean? I gave yeah. her every reason to. Yeah. Um, but that's hindsight. You know what I mean? So, anyways, I hooked up with this this other girl, and she was a she's a beautiful girl, and she has a family, and uh, I moved in with them in Connecticut. It didn't work out, and I got to the point where because COVID hit. I was on unemployment. Definitely a bad time for me fucking not working. Making too. And, right. Fucking. And, and me not working. It that's weird for me, right? I because I'm a DJ. I I own my own DJ business. Well, DJ is what say. I mean, it fucking helped you out after the if U- I had after the UPS shit. You, right. What what the fuck right. else was there? Yeah, I mean that filled the void at least, and then and then the unemployment came in. Um, but so, yeah, I had I don't know what it was. It was actually I do because I think I sent Rob the link to the video. Uh, it was a guy. I was sitting in the dark one night. And I, a guy had sent me a video, a motorcycle guy that I'm, I'm friends with in one of the groups on Facebook. And he sent me this video, and it was a guy named Scotty, uh, Scooter Tramp Scotty. And uh, basically, this guy has lived on his bike for 40 years. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, you did send me that. Yeah. But it was, he did actually a video on YouTube or some shit like yeah, that, I think I watched. Well, he had, yeah, he had a professional you know, uh, film company do a little, uh, like a 20-minute, you know, little mini movie yeah. on on his story yeah it was cool and he does his own videos on youtube and stuff and i watched his his movie basically and it was like i said a 20 minute movie but it moved me like and there were things that he said in it that resonated with me so much like he said i don't know what it is but after about two months of being in one spot i get itchy and i don't know what to do it's that natural wanderlust vagabond right it's that natural need to just go, you know, and move and explore and and see different things and experience different things. And and I've had that, like you said, this has been me my entire life. I just haven't realized it. You know what I mean? That's what if it sounds I, like. If I would have found motorcycles, oh, absolutely. if I would have found motorcycles and, and that culture 20 years ago, my life would probably be totally different. But everything happens for a reason. And I think I have a lot of, you know, insight to myself because of that. And you get along with people. You can travel. You can talk to anybody. You know, you'll help anybody out. I know that firsthand. Yeah. So I mean, that so that um, that video was kind of the catalyst um, for you yep. to inspire you it to say, fuck was. it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out there on the road on my bike and fucking see the country. Yep. I, uh, at that time, I decided that I was going to sell all my possessions, I, or pretty much all. I sold my trailer, sold my Jeep. Um, sold my DJ equipment, which that's why that's, that's, that's why that's why, that's why we can uh, we actually can do this. Yeah, this is that, this is exactly I'm, why I'm looking at my big equipment. supporter sharing yeah. everything. Actually, one of our the best supporters. Well, when they say that I'm a vagabond, you know, it's supposed to be I travel place to place without a job, but I'm I'm technically a producer. So yeah, yeah, yeah no, he, lawyer, yeah. lawyer by trade, and, right. lawyer, producer, right. Vagabond Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so you said to yourself, I'm going to do this, right? So, you, you know, you, you're unemployed, and you have the time, and you have a bike, and so you just said, fuck it, I'm going out there, getting on the road, yep. and that well, was it, And right? I was turning 40, yep. and so I said, I'm going to Sturgis for my 40th birthday. Word. So Nailed it. So I, I you know, the guy had told me about Bunker Biker, so I started u- utilizing that and planning my trip across the country. And I think I spent two nights in a hotel, and that was by choice, you know, just the because. Whole, the, whole, the whole time? Uh, five nights the entire time, probably. No shit. Yeah, five nights. The rest of the I mean, nights, I follow you, obviously, on every social media that you got, Instagram, Facebook, and you can plug that, too, if you want to tell people to follow your journey. Cause yeah. Because you, you do take a lot of pictures. Yeah, and I'm going to be um, actually. Have you been videoing any of it? I, I don't do a whole lot of video just because my phone kind of, I've dropped it. That would be interesting. Do you still use the watch? No. 
Not at all. Because, That'd be an interesting because, documentary. Because to be honest with you, bikers don't wear watches. It's just a thing. <laughs> you learned that. I learned. I, I learned that, especially especially Apple watches. <laughs> take pictures of they were like, your bike. Yeah, they were like, they were like, take that thing off. I was like, all right, and I sold it to a guy. Take this so. ring. Take this, I think it'd be take, an interesting uh, documentary for you to do that. Yeah. Well, and that's I've actually considered yeah. you know doing something like that. Um, Absolutely. You know, insight into life on the road, man. Right. I mean, even, I mean, well, there, and there's a lot of guys that do that. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people out there that right now is sharing their story. But I don't know. I think that I meet some of the most interesting people. I really do. Um, and I try and share as much of it online as I can. And everything's positive. You know what I mean? Like, I don't get on there and bitch about the traffic in yeah. New York. I don't get on there and say this place was so racist or this place was this or this place was that. <laughs> Because love. because you know what that's life. It's all love. Yeah. That's life. But you're in a good community. I mean, everything you share is always fucking positive. And and everybody that I've met in this community has been. Positive. I mean, you. I mean, I I messaged you like text you, not necessarily on online, but um. And you said, oh yeah, I got there. They had firewood. There's food. Yep. There's beers. They got me fucking yeah. yeah they, sometimes they sit there and cook me a full meal. Yeah. The first place that I w- so after I stopped in upstate New York, I I headed to Buffalo. The second people I stayed with, uh, shout out to Tom McGrath. He, out, Tommy. They put me up, and they got a beautiful backyard pool, and then a beautiful view of the skyline in Buffalo. And uh, they gave me some shitty canoe sauce, which sounded really what? bad. Yeah. What's canoe sauce? So, no, shitty canoe sauce. It's called shitty canoe sauce. <laughs> That's the name, <laughs> right? Well, right? When they handed it, <laughs> so it's it's just a sauce that they put on the hot dogs, you know. And it's explain it's, this. I, Does it I make can't. You shit? I can't. What's in it? I can't. I don't it's a know. I, yeah, they what didn't it taste t- like? It, is I, it? This is this is in Buffalo. Yeah. So maybe there's some buffalo sauce. in Well, there. no, it, it wasn't hot. It was more like a barbecue sauce, but a little milder, not sweet. Sounds you know good. What I mean, What's but anyways, called? make your bu- shitty canoe sauce. Make right? your shit. So then, so then, then they asked me, "Have you ever had buffalo wings?" And I was like, "Yeah, I don't know buffalo wings." And they were like, "You've had wings in Buffalo?" And I was like, "No." And they were like, "Then you haven't had buffalo wings." And I had them, totally different. Buffalo wings came from Buffalo. So yeah, it is a well. That's what the claim is. They have their own version. Of, I don't know if they originally. I'm not going to attest to that. If you want me to Google it, I will. But. Yeah. You- <laughs> <laughs> but uh, bring yeah. that up, Jamie. I got some friends in Buffalo. I'm going to have to ask them. No, it was uh, and that was a great trip. I went over to Niagara. Got some. I didn't get all the way over to the falls just because I got a little turned around at the Canadian border and <laughs> you got rejected you know, with COVID. Obviously, oh, yeah. you can't go anywhere. Yeah, true. Um, there was a pull off that I could have done and then walked away but I, I missed it and I ended up uh, riding into the state police barracks nice. um, parking lot taking some pictures of the falls uh, I got a picture of the lady of the mist I went on that ride actually yeah, yeah when you? I was a kid yeah, yeah it's my grandmother's favorite I didn't realize it's do. on tracks I, I never know knew that. that. I didn't know that until it's on tracks. about three seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> it is on tracks. It's not actually. I don't even know what it is. So, so it's, it's like it's, a little boat. It's not a little boat, but it's a boat you get on. It's you, like a they ferry. Give you, yeah, like a ferry. Okay. They give you. It's not as big as Block Island, but no. like it's like a half of that. And then yeah. they give you fucking rain jackets and shit. And, and then they. But you go you like falls. right. Okay, right actually, on the Niagara Falls. Yeah. Okay. Have you been to? The Canada side of Niagara Falls. Yes, like and you, yeah, you, you went to that. You went to that. I, museum. I, 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 was I went kid. to a few strip clubs over. <laughs> I heard the strip clubs are great in Canada. They are so, amazing, especially right over the border, right there. They yeah. are really good in Niagara. That's yep. what I heard. Yep. 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 No comment. Well, when COVID's <laughs> over, that's where I'm headed. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. when they open the Canadian I can't border, even right. go. so the huh? Mex- Mexican border is open. No, I'm saying when when we can go, I'm going. Go. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, you can't go. They won't let you in. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> I went when I was like 10. That's the love it. So, so you went up to upstate New York. So r- give us a little... Um, you went to 26, 28 states, you said, so 20, far? Yeah, 20. so I was going to say, give us a quick rundown of like where you've been so far. Okay, and so... Um, yeah, since June 15th, I've done 15,000 miles. That's crazy. Um, and I'll just give you a rundown of the states real quick. Yeah, I think it would be cool for people to hear where you've been and on your journey so far. Um, you've seen a lot started, more than started some in Rhode people Island. ever will. Yep, so I started in Rhode Island, went through Connecticut. We don't have to talk about Connecticut. <laughs> no, nah, this is, yeah, this is, I mean, <laughs> so um, <laughs> I, I got a few friends in Connecticut, but, you know. Yeah, so I went through uh, Mass, Connecticut, obviously, and then into New York. Then I went over into Buffalo, down through Pennsylvania, uh, into Ohio. Um, actually, I'm sorry, I stopped in West Virginia that first time, 
and uh, shout out to Great Mountain Brewing Company Hell in yeah. uh, West Virginia. They they make an awesome awesome brew. And, Great uh, Mountain Brewing. Yeah, in West Virginia, it's in uh, Thomas, West Virginia. Um, great great beer, and the people there are like the nicest people you've ever met. Like. The West yeah. Virginians are just so welcoming. Everybody gets nicer the more south you go. They well, and <laughs> I mean, I was actually kind of I felt like in northern West Virginia, you know, but but it was in the mountains. Like it's like <laughs> you can hear hear your ears pop about three times on the way up. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I stopped there. I stayed at a campground, and uh, actually, that was the first time that I laid the bike down. Um, oh I, yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, I had uh, I'd pulled over to the side of the road. There was a little bit of gravel, and I was still new at you know this kind of riding. And I used my front brake, and you don't use your front brake on gravel. You use your front brake, you end up on your ass, and that's what happened. And uh, it was the first time I'd done it, and I had the bike fully loaded. So it's an 800 pound bike plus probably another 200 pounds of luggage. You know what I mean? 150 pounds. So you learned the hard way. Yeah. I had a a state trooper had to pull over and help me lift it off the ground um, because I was, like, in the middle of the mountains. (laughs) There wasn't much else, you know. You probably got, like, 100, 200 pounds worth of shit on you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So West Virginia. Yep. So uh, left West Virginia and then went up into – Ohio. I stayed with a couple in Akron. Um, they were and really this is nice. all from Bunker, Bunker Biker. Biker yep. Yeah. And when I I called this couple in Akron, I was actually because I was going up to see my sister. Uh, she lives in Michigan. And when uh, when I called this couple, it was like last second. I, it was the same day. I was like, can I just stop there? Because I was going to try and ride all the way through, but I was I realized that I needed to set limits for myself because when you start doing long distance riding. You're not going to do seven, eight hundred miles your first couple times. Like it's just not feasible. You know what I mean? Unless you have got an iron ass and just <laughs> and, iron and, ass. And, you, and you never and you never have to pee. You know what I mean? Like, but my thing was I stop continuously. Like Rob said, I take a lot of pictures. You know, I'm. I, yeah, but you're. I mean, we were talking. I mean, you're blogging your this whole journey you're going on yeah obviously you're gonna fucking drive around i mean you i would take pictures yeah and i mean but i'll go out of my way like i'll see a highway sign and it'll like the i stopped at the jim beam distillery um (laughs) in kentucky you know that was awesome they were closed but (laughs) i got some pretty cool pictures and the reason i stopped there was because i actually met the founder uh the great great grandson of Jim Beam. Oh, Jim Beam. Yeah, his name's Fred No. He's No a, shit. Yeah, he's the CEO of CEO and president of Jim Beam Incorporated right now. And I met him in DC when I was a DJ. He came in for a promo night. You know, Jim Beam was doing a promo night where they were giving, you know, deals on all the new Jim Beam products and he came in just as a guest, yeah. you know, and we just got drunk. <laughs> and, uh, he was a cool guy, you know, so I had to stop there. That's pretty but, cool, man. But yeah, it's uh, so I headed up from Ohio to see my sister. Michigan. Got to see, yep, got to see my sister in Holland, Michigan, um, which is like one of the most. It's a gorgeous area, and I was actually in the Coast Guard in Michigan. So oh right really? yeah. So when I went up there, I was able to see my sister, see my nieces, but also I took a day to ride through where I used to serve. And it was funny because, like, I pulled into what the old 7-Eleven was right there down the street from my base, and it's now a liquor store. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Of course it is. It's a fucking irony in right. that. <laughs> and so I get some beer, and <laughs> I look at the kid, and I'm like, I'm like, how long has this been here? And he was like, I don't know, like 10 years? And I'm like, oh, it was a 7-Eleven before, right? You know? Um, it's, it's kind of weird. It's, you get to that age where you start getting nostalgic and going back to certain places that you remember as a kid. Or you know, because I was a kid, I was seventeen. Yeah, right. You know, I was I was a baby. Um, Things look a bit different now, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah. everything looks. I, I I went to my house that my parents bought, um, like when after they, get, they got married, and then we lived in Cranston, and then we went to um, Situate, which is not far from here. So I actually went one day and looked, and I and it doesn't look like it looks the same, but like doesn't you know what I mean? It's like fucking fucking weird. Well, everything looks bigger when you're a kid. Yeah, you, you yeah, yeah. The house, oh, the house was big, but it was yeah. like. But look, didn't look. It was different color, maybe. I don't fucking know. This yeah. is strange. My, you know, when you make that comment, like that's what I think about my dad. Yeah, he was so much bigger as a sure. kid for me. You know what I mean? 
And uh, as I grew up, I realized he's just a man. You know yeah. what I mean? He's, Fair enough. He's just a man. But uh, I don't know where I was going with that. It's all right. So you went to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> so, so you went to Michigan. Yeah. So, um, uh, and I got to I, – I wrote up – to Sault Ste. Marie, which I was also I was stationed in two different places because I got in trouble at my first place, and they sent me up allegedly, to the, to, allegedly, <laughs> um, to the so they sent me up to the north. Um, that was before, right before you know the end, and uh, I I never you know got in huge trouble as far as like all together, but it was like a bunch of little stuff, and it just built up. But uh, and it was always because I was like sneaking off to see a girl. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh my god. You know what I mean? Your so, life story. The skirts. Got you. Well, you know, mommy issues. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So but Michigan, so you I leave left, your sister. Yep. So I left Michigan, and then uh, I ended up going down to uh, North Carolina. So the, North Carolina. I actually love North Carolina. Yeah, I had fun. I went there. With one of the managers from it's, Mardi Gras. It's really gorgeous down there. My dad lives down there now. Um, so basically, I went back through. Oh, I forgot Indiana. Um, I was in Indiana. Shout out to Scott Bowman who saved my life. Shout out to Scotty. <laughs> um, Scott Bowman is the abate director in uh, northeast, northwest uh, Indiana, and basically abate is like the guys who go to Washington and fight for biker rights to make sure that we don't have to wear helmets if we don't want to. Yeah, you know, and shit like that. Rhode Island, you don't mass, you do. Yep. Uh, I forgot that the other day. <laughs> uh, I was actually uh, taking my ex's son. Um, Somewhere and uh, uh, yeah, the pa- somebody in, saw in Rhode me. Island. The passenger, I think, has to. Yeah, have passenger one. has to have one in Rhode Island. Um, but you know what? I've gotten to the point now where even the states where I don't have to wear it, I normally do if I think I'm getting on the highway. If it's not a short trip around the corner, and even then, you should. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say guys shouldn't wear their helmets. Well, you're out, and you're out of you're out of, my you're friend, out of state. If I yeah, know. my friend in D.C. You know, uh, I'm godfather to his daughter. He, we went riding when I went to D.C. recently, like, and right as I was doing this trip, right on the way down to North Carolina, I stopped there, and uh, I left. And three days later, he called me and said, "I just wrecked my Harley." Oh damn! No and, shit. And uh, you know, broke his wrist, and you know, and totaled the bike. And, Fucking I mean, road went rash. through went through a fence. I mean, he lives in D.C. It's one of those cities where he went through you a don't. Fence? Oh yeah, like a metal <laughs> fence, <laughs> like like a, uh, uh, like wood, a fence. wood fence, like wood a fence. neighborhood. Yeah. But he was on like a, I mean, a neighborhood in D.C. is like a four lane highway on either side. You know yeah. what I mean? Like these, these are, and people just fly there. You know, so you better be driving offensively. Yeah, four lane highways. highway is no joke. No, on both. Yeah, they and they get nuts. You know, they just get crazy. So have you been down south? Uh, so on your journey? Yeah. So um, I went down. So I went to Sturgis um, for my fortieth birthday, and. Uh, Absolutely loved it. It was an awesome event, and I'm glad that COVID didn't keep people away the way they. Well, there was controversy it would. about that. Too. Well, and the yeah, con- tell us about that. Actually, tell us about the experience so, up there. Well, with COVID especially. So people, nobody was wearing masks. All right, <laughs> I Not, saw that. There yeah. wasn't so a mask. No there wasn't. Distancing. There wasn't a mask in, in sight, and there was no social distancing, especially at the campground I stayed at because I went on Facebook um, before I'd left and joined like the Sturgis Facebook group. Because that's what I—that's how I learn about stuff, you know. Facebook groups kind of do a great job of uh, yeah, kind of bringing people. I'm on like a hundred ferret yeah, ones, like a psychopath. Exa- <laughs> <laughs> why does that not surprise yeah. me? Oh, I need to say hi to the ferrets while I'm here too. Um, but uh, so I'm in this this uh, Sturgis Facebook group, and I asked people. I said it's my 40th birthday. I'm single by myself riding, and I'm staying. You know, I want to stay at a campground. Where should I stay? And overwhelmingly, they said Glencoe. And shout out to Glencoe. Um, they, uh, they're a clothing optional. Uh, clothing optional. Clothing optional. So yeah, it's potentially I, a nudist colony. I did not know this. This isn't so. <laughs> so everybody, everybody that said Glencoe, nobody said that it was clothing optional. And when you look at their website, it doesn't say clothing, clothing optional. optional until you get there. And you but you get there and you see like five sack. swinging dicks. As, so, as <laughs> soon as you come through the gate, you see like I saw a guy dressed as a pirate with his cock hanging out, and I'm like, okay, so that's the what this place is. This that's is that what, who gave you that ring. No, <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. He gave me a different kind of ring. 
So clothing is optional. So you could, you know, you could do the nudist thing, or you can keep your clothes on. Right. Right. Yep. Did um, you go for the? Uh, so as well option? on my birthday. Oh, you definitely I, did. I got naked and I rode my bike around the campground. <laughs> yep, I did. Did anyone get that on video? They have pictures. I actually have pictures, yeah. Um, and it shows like me in my house slippers. In your birthday with, suit. With white socks. Yeah, okay. and uh, in my birthday suit. So, but I, you know what I mean? It's like one of the most freeing things I've ever done because nobody gave a shit. You know, I, I walked out of the tent. I had gotten up that morning, and I said, you know what? I'm 40 today. I don't give a fuck. And because it's allowed, I'm going to do it. So I walked out, and first thing I heard was, nice ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's it. And then I, you know, so nobody gave a shit. And it was freeing for me, and it was it was kind of like just me saying, fuck it. You know, I'm, I don't – and it was a turning point for me because I, I used to care so much about other people's opinions – and what they thought of me and what they thought of the way I was living my life, you know, because... Oh, that's out the window at this point. Who cares? Yeah, why no, am I... I why, agree. Why I've been to a nude beach before. <laughs> <laughs> Where was this? Uh, Mexico. Oh, yeah? yeah All nice. right, you got to give me the address because that's was probably... You're going to go there headed. next? <laughs> the, borders are, the borders are open, senor. Yeah. Senor, the borders are open, so... Yes, I'm thinking. I actually have a friend that's another admin on Bunker Biker that lives in Mexico. Fuck yeah! That has already invited me down. You know, so that's the thing about a community of people like that. Yeah, it's, I've it's that. absolutely amazing. I can go anywhere in this country, and actually, Bunker Biker is not just the United States. It's 13 different countries. Oh, it's wow. worldwide, right? There are people in England, Germany, Australia. Like everywhere. No sure. everywhere. So do you have plans to uh, travel internationally? I want to. Um, right now, it's all about the fundage. You right, know? right. So uh, I've been kind of keeping it local and keeping it. Well, not local. Well, not, lo- <laughs> yeah. not within, well, within, within the country. The nation, within the yeah. country. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, have, you can go to Mexico. You can go to Canada. Right. I ha- well, no, you can't. Canada's going to be tough. Yeah. Yeah. I, but see, that's the thing. You, I haven't had that choice because I was actually thinking about going to Mexico before I even thought of Sturgis. Gotcha. But then COVID hit. That wasn't an option, you right. know what I mean? So I said, what in the country, you know, piques my interest? And then, you know, Sturgis was an obvious choice. And uh, and the, thank God they had it, you know. So from Sturgis, what, where'd you go after that? So, you know, my family was really worried about COVID, and they saw the, the press. And, and like you said, you know, it was, it was a lot of information going out there saying that we were the super spreaders and all this. You know, I – met and am still friends with and talk to a lot of people that I met there and you know when I say a lot of people like hundreds of people that I met there nobody was sick you know but they're attributing 200,000 extra cases connected to right. Sturgis somehow um, even though there was number a inflation right but then you have the governor coming out saying this is false you know and and their, their governor she's I kind of think she's a badass she came out and she was like your numbers are fake you know your yeah. your study is stupid and and it doesn't. And none of it made sense. Um, where were we? So Sturgis. after after Sturgis. Yes. So I went down to New Mexico. Oh, and, New Mexico. Uh, cool. Yeah. So I went and self quarantined. Um, I went to a river, and a friend of mine had property there. She had uh, sheep that she had to take care of. Um, oh yeah, you were telling me this. Yeah. So. She let me, because I, I told her, I said, I need to stay on the property, but we can't really interact because I'm self-quarantined for 14 days. I want to make sure that I'm not bringing anything from Sturgis, you know. Yeah. I'm just going to do my own thing. Instead of, because most people are to do a hotel or whatever, you know, their house. I, I didn't have that. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? So it was Literally like, on the road. Yeah. So Were you living in a tent or something? Yeah. I, I had a tent. I have a hammock. Yeah. Um, if the people that don't, uh, that bunk a biker, if they don't, if they, he didn't have an offering, I'm sure. If it was, I mean, even if they did, probably, if it was a nice day, you wouldn't even fucking mind. Probably, yeah. But, but with now. bunk a biker, I wasn't looking at using that for my quarantine. Yeah. Um, I yeah, exactly. I knew somebody that had the extra property. So how'd you meet this lady? Um, so my one of my friends from Alaska actually lives in New Mexico. He's from New Mexico originally. Oh, yeah. So he had invited me down, and I was like, "Well, listen, I got to do the, I got to self quarantine. Is there, you know, do you know of any place?" And he had this this lady that he knew. She was actually a, a former judge. No, sure. and, yeah, I think you told me that on yeah, the phone. Uh, she wrote a book uh, about meth addicts because it's such a bad problem in New Mexico. Yeah, because uh, it's close to the border. Oh, That's yeah. how Nevada was like that. You fucking yeah, meth, get it's meth insane. anywhere. It's insane. But. Uh, 
But it was a good experience. She had sheep. She had uh, a couple goats, dogs that wanted to rip my head off. You know, <laughs> um, I I took care of the, the sheep while I was there, just kind of as payment for me being able to stay there, and you know, watered them and cleaned out the pen and stuff. And then one day, my friend and another friend of his were there, and I was sitting in the river looking at rocks because that's what you do in New Mexico because the rocks are crazy. <laughs> I mean, I bought I yeah, brought you, you some of the crazy rocks. Thank you, you man. Know? Actually, petrified um, petrified wood or yeah, whatever the hell you yeah. said. It's like it's, it looks like rocks. No, it's petrified. Yeah, that's petrified wood. But but I was sitting in the river just looking at rocks, and this uh, this lady pulled up the tree stump because she wanted to see if there was gold in it because that's there's a bunch of gold fever in new mexico because yeah. it's everywhere you know but it's not a lot <laughs> yeah. you have to you have to have an army to be able to make any money off this shit mm. you know what i mean but these people are like oh my god staring at every little thing <laughs> so this chick and half of them are on math so well three quarters probably so she pulls this stump up and i swear to christ it was two thousand wasps come out of wow, the stump what? and cover her right her b- like her body like like a horror movie. Do they stay right? here? You think? Obviously. You think? So. No, they just. So, I don't know. So I don't know. I'm just so, chill for a little while. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the river and I see this happen and she just starts screaming, help me, help me, help me. And I'm like, fuck that. Run, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> run. Jump in the right? water or something. All right. I'm like, run, do something. And she just stands there and the next thing you know, she just drops to the ground. Yeah, you and fucking, they're still they on her. And they fucking die. And I'm like. Well, and they can keep staying, yeah. right? Because they're wasps. So they what if she's allergic? She doesn't have a fucking EpiPen. I mean, well, I don't know. You probably need several EpiPens. So, 2,000 fucking bees. So, obviously, I started towards her. I took two steps. I got attacked. I got stung seven times. Damn. I'm not allergic, but it messed me up. Like, for the next, like, no three shit. days. I, was, I had one right on the forehead, like, right in my brain. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was bad. She had, like, 30. Yeah, and those fuckers. And one of them got her right in the between the legs. Oh yeah. <laughs> so she, how, what happened? How that she okay? She's she's all right. We got her to the hospital. So I didn't get her to the hospital. My friend that was with us, he was on the other side of the river. He comes running over, runs right up to her, doesn't get stung once, swats him away, and gets her in the truck. Really? Yeah. And then we get back, and I'm like, dude, how, how'd you like? How'd you do that? They didn't s- touch you. And he was like, they don't like gay people. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, homophobic wasps makes sense. <laughs> so, but yeah, she, uh, she, she ended up being all right. But I had PTSD for like the next three weeks. I bet. I want like every time something flew by me, and in New Mexico, everything flies or crawls. You look at the <laughs> ground; it looks like the entire ground is crawling because there's there's so much, so much shit. shit like there. I was fucking slow as and, look, and I'm out in the middle of the desert picking up pieces of petrified wood because they're <laughs> like so amazing. And I'm waiting for like some kind of tarantula or some scorpion to jump out and fucking eat me. Yeah, it was. It, it and I I actually had my very first, um, ex, not extraterrestrial. Um, oh, this is good. Beyond this world. Really? Experience. Well, tell us yeah. about that. That was my very first one in uh, in New Mexico. Did you lick so, a toad? No, I didn't. <laughs> so I was I was camping in, uh, next to this river um, in New Mexico on this lady's property, and I saw hunters on the other side. And it was like maybe nine, ten o'clock at night. It was pretty dark, and it was getting cold. But I saw hunters, but it, it they weren't like their faces weren't like hunter faces. They looked like almost like Indians, right? Um, and they had weapons that didn't look like this time. They they had like old style weapons. As, like all through the woods, I saw. Them. Maybe they were Indians. Or may, Native Americans. Maybe, yeah, maybe. But there are no Indians in that area, like like a, that that kind of Indian anymore. But there were, and I found out the next day from my friend that that river was like the site of like a huge Indian massacre. Really, like thousands and thousands of Indians had lost oh. their lives at that very spot, and. He said that like that is normal for stuff like that to happen, and I and I yeah, and like I, premonition. And I still right? and I still swear that I saw some like I did see something for the first time in my life because I've been a skeptic my entire life. Yeah. I've been like I won't believe it unless I see something. Da da da. I was like, well, what the fuck is that? Right. <laughs> so you definitely right. had a paranormal experience. Yeah. And I took pictures of it. Like I was taking pictures because it was so kind of strange to me. And then the next day I looked at them and they looked 
regular. Well, I'll know? tell you what. I, I'm not going to go into it, but I had a paranormal experience on um, Indian burial ground as well. Really? In Pennsylvania, yeah. So I definitely think yeah. there's something to it. I, I really, like, they, they're they tied to this earth. Whether, yeah, oh, whether, for sure. You know, and, uh, they were one with the, with the earth, right, you know. They, right. they worshiped the uh, and, and that's why every state that I go through, I find the closest casino and make sure I make my homage. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I want to make sure. I think I have, like, six different casino cards <laughs> in my pocket. But this is the thing, right? So you travel around the country and you go to these casinos. You're a brand-new customer. You walk in. And you say, oh, I'm brand new. Oh, here's $10 free. So you get mm. the 10 bucks. I was in Kentucky, right at Kentucky Downs. There's a new casino called The Mint right next door. So it's the Kentucky Downs is the horse racing, and then you have the, mm. the Mint, which is the slots. And I ended up winning like 150 bucks. I got a hotel room that night because I was so happy. <laughs> you know, I hadn't had a shower in like a week and a half. So I was like, yeah, this, this boy's getting a – and it was because I took their 10 bucks and I put another, I think, 20 bucks on it. So I had 30 bucks invested, and I ended up getting to 150 And I was like, yep. No, I'm they're done. getting there. They'll feed you too. Fucking, you can eat. Well, not, so, so that not shit. anymore. Points, That's no. the problem. So yeah, well, casinos have changed. Everything's changed. Well, now but the, the casinos COVID are totally too. different. They're not serving drinks on the floor. If they, you know, and then that means normally they're not giving them for free. Yeah. And because they've had to cut costs too. Yeah, they haven't had as much business. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to cry for them because they've taken a lot of money over <laughs> over the years for me. But, um, but I know that. Um, but I feel bad for the employees, especially. Sure. You know, you see, especially some of these communities. I was driving through some towns where the gas station had a little casino in it. You know what I mean? And they have those in Vegas. They have like yeah. slot machines. Yeah, in the right, thing. right. Yeah. Well, they're like in the airport. You know? Yeah, I always did good in the airport. That well, was the tabletops. And- yeah, yeah. So, um, but that kept people employed sometimes. You know. Um, well, it's interesting. You see how you've gotten to see how COVID has affected people all across the country right now. Yeah, I mean, well, many of us haven't. We've yeah pretty much in some states stayed are- where, where we're well. You know, that's home. so. Yeah, exactly. So that's the East Coast. The East Coast. Locked got locked down, down right yeah, yeah. so that didn't happen in the rest of the country and to be honest with you good for them um in oh, my, in, so midwest is no uh, i mean south dakota never right. never ever locked down yeah and, i heard that and and then they're saying the numbers that they're saying coming out there even if those are true numbers they never locked down that's yeah. that's not that bad yeah you know <laughs> especially when you had half a half a million bikers in your town yeah for th- yeah. two and a half three weeks like being raunchy <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> i'm not saying we were just riding bikes you know yeah. what i mean yeah. we had a good time and and if anybody gets a chance to get out there the the riding in south dakota is is some of the i mean i've never that's the farthest west i've been um, yeah i was gonna ask you that how far yeah, west did you go that was the farthest okay. yeah and then so I do you came, plan on returning uh back west i want to go to california yeah, yeah. yeah that was i, was I had a, so cool. my i went when i was a kid my dad took us to the san diego zoo that's the only experience mm-hmm. i have and then after that my dad said don't ever go to california it's too expensive <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. so i just i never went to california you know what i mean because i was trying to make dad happy you be careful you don't step in shit. People will be pooping everywhere. Yeah, that's what? So, uh, San they have Francisco. An app. Download San Francisco, app. there's a huge uh, homeless oh, really? population. Yeah, it's out of control. Really? <laughs> Despite the fact that San Francisco is super expensive to live, they have like this huge, massive fucking homeless uh, population there. And there's, like Skid Row. And there's, yeah, Skid well, Row. Well, I heard Vegas is kind of like that right now with COVID. I heard that a lot, I think of, a lot the, of places are. A lot of casinos are yeah. full of homeless people. I mean, which one call had? I mean, they had it anyway. I think uh, San Francisco. Yeah, they had. They've had, had it for a long time. And now it's just like them in uh, Portland. Terrible. Portland, Oregon is another place too that has. A, is that where South really? Park got the uh, got the skip from? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Now, did you know that there's an actual South Park, Colorado? Did I didn't. I thought it was I, fictional. I went through there, and I have a sticker oh, cool. on my bike. I've got. I bought a sweatshirt <laughs> while I was there. Yeah, I drove through, and I, and it's a tiny little town. Like yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like like they say. So they based it on a real town. Yeah, no, it's real. I was like, I was amazed. I didn't, never knew that. And, I actually uh, didn't know that either. Yeah, I was. I it was just a that's why place. I bought the sticker and put it on the bike. So, um, are they from there? I have no idea. What's that? The creator is it, is it, is it based? I don't is know. it based off of there? Because it was always cold and shit. It was wearing fucking. Well, it's Colorado, yeah. I mean, Colorado, I think yeah. they just picked a name in Colorado. I don't that know how. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Actually, maybe they are. I don't know. Fuck. Don't know. Google that Some, shit. Yeah, Jamie, bring that up. <laughs> Where's Jamie? Jamie, Jamie, bring that up. All right. Who's? 
Our, our uh, producer, our research oh, guy. Oh, oh, okay. He's, on, he's, in, he's right there. Thanks, he's sitting Jamie. right next to you. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> so, um, so farthest west you've been in South Dakota. So you yep. plan on And then go- I went south, and then I came back east. Um, I was coming back east, and I was kind of taking my time. Um, I had some stuff that I had to take care of. Up How in deep the, into the south did you get? Um, Texas. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. So New Mexico, Texas. Um, Southwest. Kentucky, Kentucky, yeah. No, you were down there. But you didn't get down to, like, the bayou. Yeah, like, I didn't. So I was actually – that's funny you mentioned that because, you know, I'm from right from New Orleans. Right. I was going to go down to New Orleans when I was in Texas, and that's when the hurricane came in. So I actually had to change my plans. You know, when you're on the road all the time and you're basically living on the road, you're – Every plan has got to be liquid. Like, it's got to be fluid and, and be able to change at a moment's notice because weather happens a lot, you know. I actually, on this trip, have been so lucky with the rain. My rain gear got stolen out of my uh, saddlebag in Hartford. So, hey, shout out to Hartford. Fuck you. Hartford, um, Connecticut? Yeah. Go figure. Fucking <laughs> shit bag. some kind of hatred for Connecticut. I, don't, I just don't. I, I, I don't like Hartford. I, I lived just outside of Hartford um, before, and, yeah, I don't like Hartford. There's just not – I've never seen anything good come out of it. But, anyways, um, yeah, so got my rain gear stolen. But then this entire trip, I think I've hit, like, three days, and it was, it was like, spotty. It wasn't, like, a full day of yeah, rain. Like it, was enough, it was enough to where I could just put my leather on and be fine. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I've gotten really lucky with the with the weather. What what other um, obstacles do you think? Like maybe whether it be like problems with the bike or weather related. Oh but, well, yeah. I mean, you you kind of. I mean, anything can happen. Like you said, at yeah. moments known as you can change something. Anything can happen. Well, like I on my ride over to Sturgis, I had just put new tires on this season, and as I was riding over, I stopped in Indiana to see Scott Bowman again, a guy from, from Bunker Biker. Mm-hmm. And he's got a bike lift right in his garage, right? So he invites me in. I had the oil and the, and the filter, and he changed my oil for me. You know, he didn't need to. I know how to, but he, was, he just yeah. likes doing it, you know. So he just sat down and started doing it. And he noticed that my back tire was bald, like bald to the where you could see the wire. Mm-hmm. Like he looked at me and said, blown that you shit out. almost died. Like with the amount of weight that I have on the bike, you know it would have been it would have been catastrophic if it would have blown you know and he noticed this as he's changing my oil just randomly i didn't notice it because it was on a spot where if i had turned the tire you know each time i look at the tire i gotta move it all the way around you know what i mean so that's something you learn as you go you learn what looks like when you get a nail in the tire and you're trying to find it if you got to get it plugged or where what the fuck my tire is slow leak and then you spin it spin it and the car is harder than a fucking bike but he had the lift so your money yeah with the lift, it, he he had it up, and he was able to actually see the spot. And uh, I called a shop, and they got me in that I think that that day, or the next day, one of the two. But they put a new tire on. You know, thankfully it wasn't out of my budget because yeah. <laughs> I was still working off of equipment money, which was <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, that's there's a lot of different challenges. As far as the weather, the mechanics, and then just your mentality. Yeah. <clears throat> How? What do you want to get out of this journey? Right? Do you want to just ride a motorcycle? Do you want to just go fast and just get to the next place, to the next place, to the next place, to the next place? No, you got to embrace it. That's why you right. stop every 60 that's, miles. Right. That's what I, I didn't want to do that. And that's why I don't really ride with groups because... Yeah. Yeah, we were talking know, about that before. We yeah, were and it's not that I'm against group riding. I love riding with a group, especially when I'm doing like charity rides and stuff. But I don't like um, I don't like being forced to to fit somebody else's schedule, and I don't like stopping and then feeling bad because I made them stop yeah. because I wanted to look at a freaking waterfall or yeah. you know. Yeah, take, you're doing your own thing. You want to yeah. see things. Yeah, that's and what that's be on your own about, time. Man. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. It's freedom. That's right. that's the whole point of it for me. The whole point of riding is freedom. Nobody can tell me what to do while I'm out on that bike. I can do what I want. You're your you know, own man. Yeah, yeah, except for the police, and they right. can only tell me to a certain point because I'm still going to break those rules. Allegedly. Yeah, you got um, Just got to throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's, it's an experience, and, and uh, I really wish I would have found it a lot sooner in life. 
But well, now you're on you're on the right track. You're you're doing uh, what you wanted to do, and I think it came naturally. Yeah, a natural no. progression uh, after a chain of events, and now you you know I give you props, man. You're, a lot of people would not be brave enough to embark on a journey like this. Well, that's the thing. I I go out and I I meet so many people, and it's always you know especially if it's a couple, right? So bunker biker couple, it's the mm-hmm. husband and the wife. The husband always is like pulls me aside and he's like, "Fence, oh, you're living the fucking life, man. <laughs> oh, I wish I could do what you're doing." And I'm like, "Yeah, but you got kids and a wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't have anything to really tie you down I, at this point. I don't can't. have kids. I've never had, you know, any any kids. So that that's the only thing, in my opinion, that's the only thing that would have ever held me down because." Obviously, women didn't. You know, right, right. Um, they got to the point where I got, I wasn't happy with the way. Well, if it didn't work with the woman, it's probably good you didn't have kids. Right, sure. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because then you'd just be like every motherfucker else. Right, and yeah. and that's the thing. I've I've always wanted them, yeah. but I never wanted to. Oh, you're jump, great with kids. I never wanted to jump into that with the wrong person, and and it always ended up being the wrong person. So Dude, it just imagine didn't. Imagine if you had a kid with. I'm not going to say. Names. Yeah, I know. What? Right. I know. <laughs> it would have been the end of, end of my life. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Where, where do you see this journey taking you uh, in the future? Besides um, California. Yeah. So, I, I don't even just mean like right. um, destination wise. I mean just in general as a person. That I don't. I don't. You, you know, haven't figured that out. Well, yet. that I don't know. I don't know. I think you just play it by ear. Look at the yeah. other guy. He was talking about. He's been doing it for forty five. Yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. Do you see yourself like continuing yeah. to do this for? Yeah, yeah. I a definite why, amount of time. That's why I'm vagabond, Rob. Yeah, okay. um, yeah. So this is this is what you're going to be doing. <clears throat> yep. Um, so no no plans to settle down or. I mean, no. things can change. You know, Looking but life things on can the road. change. And I and I like, you know, you travel around and you meet women and you're talking to them and now I'm pretty forward about. You know, the what way I doing? think and stuff. And they look at me and they say, oh, so you're not going to be here very long. And I'm like, no. And they either like that <laughs> <laughs> or they don't, you know. And a lot of them are like, well, oh, you just don't want to settle down. And I'm like, I'm not saying that. I don't know that. Like, right. Settle down I, didn't work. Yeah. Here we I, are. I tr- I, well, I went straight into the settle down every time. Yeah. You know, there's got to be. trying something new. There's got to be some kind of, like, courtship, you know. I right now I've got women that I met along the way that I'm still chatting with, right? Sure. I keep those conversations yeah. going and I was never a guy who talked to a bunch of women at once. So now being able to do it mm-hmm. is kind of sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like women and I like talking to them and I like I like conversing and sharing ideas and stuff and and some of them are funny as shit. You know, that's my thing. I look for a sense of humor and I look for, you know, somebody that can make me laugh. Um, that's important. And I talk to, you know, a few chicks that do that and a few that don't. So, I don't know. I like chicks. That's a good thing. <laughs> Glad we got that out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> you can edit that out. That's right. <laughs> no, we're keeping that in, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's authenticious. So, um, so, uh, so, so I, ju- I actually, I was, you know, re- on the end of this route, I was coming through uh, Indiana. I was in Terre Haute. I got a hotel room. And uh, because I needed a shower once again, because um, the river just doesn't do it. I tried. A, <laughs> I tried a couple river shower, like river baths, and didn't come, go well. You come out. In. You come out smelling worse than you, <laughs> than you went in. It's, it's like you're like, what the hell? My is in question that river? for you is, what, do you, what, what, what about in the winter? You're gonna have to go to. Fucking, I'm going. You're south. gonna have to go to south yeah. to go to California. Right. Yeah, south. west. That's, south. that's the whole yeah, point. Yeah, 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 that's the whole point. So travel with the seasons. It's just getting fucking That's what that cold, guy does. Man. You know, he he travels. He said he hasn't seen a winter in forty years. Yeah. you know what I mean. I don't fucking. Um, I wish I hadn't seen one in thirty four years. <laughs> <laughs> Chris probably likes the winter. I like the winter. I don't mind it. I, fucking New England, bro. Dark and cold, son. <laughs> Straight gangster. I, can, I, I could do it like fall all year round. When was the last I, time I've been cool to the beach? Uh, I can't even. I don't know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm not a beach comber. Have you been? To, have you been to the beach on your uh, journey? Any any cool beaches or anything like that? Maybe if I rode by one and took a picture, but yeah, I don't yeah. really go to the beach. Yeah, see? I'm not a beach right. guy. See? Yeah. You went, now, now I'm not the only one. Now and I'm not an ocean. Yeah, I like I like I love being by the ocean. Yeah. But I'm like I'm not the guy that goes in the Yeah. Ocean. yeah like no, I was in the either. I was in the Coast Guard and <laughs> yeah, right. I, I don't like going to the spent time on the water. But see that's the thing. That was Lake Michigan, which is kinda like the ocean to be right. You right. Know, it's a pretty big lake and, yeah. and it gets its 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 issues, but 
The ocean is just too cold, yeah. in my opinion. Like, I don't like I'll swimming. I'll die right in that fucking bit. So, how, how I look at it is this, too, is is we're not really meant to be in the ocean. Right. That's not our territory. That's not our territory. There's all exactly. kinds of shit. We shit took over there. the land. Exactly, dude. The this, land is ours. Those motherfuckers down in the ocean. And you like, don't know what the hell's down there. There's no, still, dude. There's, I guarantee there's still shit down there that we don't even sure swim there is. about. Can you uh, swim? I can swim. I haven't swam in a while, but I can. I used to. I actually used to love the water when I was a kid. I spent a it's lot of time. It's the best in the water. workout. Yeah, for no, you it is at all. But my thing is like, yo, you know, people get bit and attacked by this and that, dude. But that's because that's, that's like people getting struck by fucking lightning. It's not. You don't no. see. No, it's not. No, no. Are you kidding? How me? many people get? What are the people numbers? voluntarily up, go dude. into the ocean? <laughs> you know? Jamie, get that. And I get it. Like you want to explore. You know, as as humans, we're inquisitive, right? We want to explore things, and people want to go see what's down there. Which well, but this I is. Get. But you got to fucking know, man, you're putting your life so into the know hands your of, environment, of the sea. right? That goes back to New Mexico where she pulled that stump up. Yeah. She didn't know where she was. Right. She should have realized that a stump like that could contain something. You know, something in, 2,000 in a, fucking murder yeah. hornets. <laughs> murder hornets. Well, and they actually have them there. They showed me one. Had, really? Had three stingers. So they are real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they're dead real. No, they're dead real. Absolutely. Dead real. They're and real. actually, they I heard. Just, I heard they they've. I heard they've been in this. I heard they've been in this country for long years. time. Yeah. Oh, really? People have seen them for years. But yeah. I think I got one downstairs caught in a spider. What, what about killer bees? I don't know about that. <laughs> it's like Wu Tang. <laughs> That's not yeah, Wu Tang. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no. But um, no, I, I'm with you on the ocean. But you're kind of, you know, you're kind of living like a a, va- um, a land Viking existence right now. Anyway, you yeah, know, you're kind of yeah. pillaging and you're like, you're like John fucking Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John Rambo. Um, it's kind of I dig it, man. I fucking gave you mad props, dude. All he wanted you was know? something to eat. I, I I like I've been on the road a little bit with the music stuff. Um, not recently, but you know, a couple years back. And I and it was cool. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't anything like. Um, That's what you're looking at is oh, tra- tra- Hollywood tra- fantasy, tra- but tra- right. it was closer to what you were doing. You know, what I'm saying we were a bunch of motherfuckers in a van going from show to show right. into the Midwest and Southwest. Um, and I I want to do it again. I mean, I'd like to you know be a little more. I would like uh, to do it with lavish a, with but, a fucking RV. Yeah, I no, that'd be cool I drove too. Across country, well, I drove to Nevada, to Vegas twice. A bus. But when you when you grind it I'm out buying, like that, I'm buying a bus. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Seven. Dude, those conversion bus, not even the ones you make yourself, and you can do it. You're handy. Yeah. Yeah. You could fucking you can get a easy. bus. Dirt you can get them for like three grand. Dope, kid. Yeah. Get, Some get the of bus them are for fucking like, nice, man. Yeah, get the bus for three grand. Rip out the seats. Put, you, frame, I could put the bike frame, in there. Frame it out. Yeah. Like, the no, thing is, guys though, do that. As yeah, you, you, you could even tr- you could even pull a fucking trailer for the bike. Yep. You know what I mean? So you can have like a room and a fucking right. pisser shitter kit, fucking little kitchen. They have they have yep. tons of. A friend of mine did a school bus. Yeah, that's actually. what I'm talking about. I would so do a, I would do you could do a mini one. There's seven. Point, I wouldn't want to drive a seven point three diesels. They're the best motor that. And then they you ever can just made. go park that somewhere, have your hook up, and then fucking leave it. And yep. then I mean, even Walmart, you can park. There's any, all kinds anywhere. of options. Yeah. Well, kinds and you can attest to this, right? When you when you're out there grinding it out, man, you you learn some shit and you. You experience some shit, and you're like, it makes you. If you, you, know, have, a, if you have tougher, a and and um, gives you a different perspective on things. It makes me more aware. Yeah, you know, I yeah. I'm being I'm a lot more aware of my surroundings. I'm aware of the way that I'm that I'm carrying myself. Sure, because you're in different places. And that and you know, like I said, I, I I'm no stranger to addiction, and I'm no stranger to having more you know than a few drinks when I probably shouldn't. And now that I've been on the bike. I don't do that. Yeah, you, know? you can't. Um, I could. Well, you can. You're, you're, <laughs> you know, you're, I could, but you're taking a big fucking rest. Yeah. Well, and not only with a couple yourself, hours at the VFW, especially on a bike, man. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. And, and, well, that makes you more. Yeah, that's why you're more cautious, right. and you don't stay somewhere where you can make a lot of too many wrong contacts. And so that's that's another great you're not thing as about a, a group like Bunker Biker, right? So you get your you grind it out, you do your mileage, you figure out where you want to be, and you call them and you set it up. Then you get there, and most of them have a 12-pack waiting, yeah. and you just you hang out by the fire, yeah. and you get to meet their families, and you get to hear Exchange their stories. stories. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. cool, man. You know, by the fire, see all the, the, all the posters. The first, two, the first two places that I stopped, the first person, I walked in, and it smelled like weed, and she was so apologetic, and she was like, I'm so sorry, it smells like weed in here. And I was like, that's all right. You want me to roll one? Yeah. You know. And I find out that she has MS, and that helps her with her MS. Yeah. And the second stop, um, you know, they were all partying and I said, Hey, do you guys smoke? And they said, yeah, you got any? I was like, yeah, let's smoke. So then I find out that his mother had a stroke and stutters. And every time she talked to me, she, she would stutter. And then we smoked 
and within 10 minutes she wasn't stuttering and i looked at her i looked at her daughter-in-law and i said hey i said you notice she's not stuttering at all and she said oh my god you're right she hasn't like it's and i said it's a medicine yeah it's absolutely. a medication for her and if it helps it a helps a lot of people you know um and cuz they she you know is from an older generation so she feels weird about it you know and she shouldn't she should be able to use that and make sure that if it helps her in, in her daily life more power to you yeah i think at this point we you know most people understand that <clears throat> marijuana is definitely uh medicine yeah you know, for a lot of people it was amazing yeah. I don't think it should be looked at as anything else. Oh, and I had a woman tell me that I'm probably a psychic, and she gave me a set of tarot cards. How are really? We doing yes. readings? I haven't yet because she hasn't shown me how to use them. Because you'll, you'll really be a vagabond then. <laughs> if you start doing fucking well, tarot readings, you're gonna start turning the gypsy word. Well, well, he's already on his way, dude. And that's he's what, already on and, his way. And, right and that's now. what I was saying was like actually that I could probably go down to New Orleans and make some money doing that. Oh you yeah, know I mean? yeah. So yeah. Uh, get the old top hat and. Uh, Black fingernails. Hell yeah. <laughs> that, might be, that might be the next move for you. We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? You know, the f I don't, right now, everybody says, oh, what's your next move? I never have an answer. You know, I'm like, talk to me tomorrow. That's good, man. I'm like, tonight. You're living for the day, bro. I'm like, tonight I'm here. You're you living know? for the day. Yeah. That, and, uh, that's, and now a lot of people ask real. me, where, hey, where's home? And I'm like, it's here. The road. No, it's here because I'm here. Yeah. The, wherever where I'm, I'm at. at. Mm -hmm. I'm at home because I'm finally comfortable with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I dig it. From where you're at. You, you just said, fuck it, man. You know, I'm living for the day. I'm living for the now. People talk about how we need to live in the moment. You're, you're really, you're really and doing that. It was a that. life changing fucking Yeah, man. And I, I respect experience. that, dude. Like, in, in this day and age, like, there's, you're not, nobody's guaranteed, you know. Well, everyone's so worried about every, I mean, Aside from what's going on with COVID and everything, everyone's so You're worried. You're probably the smartest motherfucker out of anyone in this whole yeah. fucking <laughs> but, 2020 because you just <laughs> fuck everything. I'm just going and enjoying yeah. myself when everyone else is stuck home. Right? Miserable. If the world's going to end, at least I'm going out happy. Well, and the, I mean, the funny thing is I've ridden across the country. hasn't got, haven't gotten messed with once as far as crossing a state line. Yep. Or any of, like I have never I haven't been pulled over knock on wood once ever yeah. on my motorcycle. Yeah, I keep getting these letters from the state. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, you, they might they might be tolls because my my easy Actually, pass no, shit. my easy pass is not all well, up to date. They haven't caught that yet. They ain't catching COVID. Well, <laughs> well, I kind of have half the plate covered up with a bungee cord, so. But you're, you're to me, you're living the dream, man. Because for for you, you know, your your personal dream. I mean, and how many people are listening to this will just get on a bike and? Go? No, not many. Um, <laughs> but a lot. Of, but how many people actually pursue their dreams in general? So I think that's what I'm saying. You're like, a testament to saying, okay, fuck it, man. I'm gonna pursue my dream. Not and yeah. and I'm living it. But it took me so long to figure yeah, out. I mean, that, that was nothing my, happens you know overnight. I mean? Like I I, but now that I found it, it's it's so freeing and and. Um, empowering you know what oh, i mean yeah. Word, and man. to be honest with you i've picked up more chicks now because now i'm so much more confident <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have one skirt right no to. now now they all flock to me because it was always me chasing one and yeah. trying to make one happy yeah. and then getting shit on and uh or you know me not being into it either you know it, it's always two sides to every story and right you know i'm not s s claiming blamelessness in any of my relationships because there's always blame to go around. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. It sounds uh, sounds like you're in a good place, and uh, I hope you stick it out. Yeah, no, keep I'm gonna up. I'm it gonna keep like you me. guys updated. And, yeah, man. Uh, and yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be. You creating... have to be our correspondent from yeah. the room. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be cre Actually, we, we could, could do we that. Could, we could call in. We no, could do I that. Know. We could do call ins. You know, and yeah. and uh, from wherever I'm at, and give you an update of what's going yeah, on man. across cool. the country, because. Uh, it's really different when you see – because every place I went into, I said, how long have you guys been shut down? You know, it's I, I wanted to know, you yeah. know, how has this affected you? Yeah, yeah. And most of them, it was – we were shut down for this time, and then afterwards we were like, fuck it. Hey, we man, have to get back to work. You could write a book, dude, one day. You know, you keep doing this? Yeah. Man, I just got make to, an uh, interesting book. I just got it. And if you do and it blows up, I, 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 want, a, I, want, I want a percentage because I just gave you the idea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're the you're guy that gave me the idea to write a book. <laughs> I've wanted to write a book, make a movie. The Vagabond I mean. Memoirs. But now you have something to make a book about. Right. Well, that's the thing. You know, I always I've been chasing like that dream. Right. Just that 
I just wanted to be comfortable and happy in life. And I always thought that that was getting a great job and having a 401k yeah. and making sure the I American had health dream. insurance and being able to buy a house and having a wife and having kids. Yeah. And that just wasn't my path. You no. know what I mean? And that's okay. Yeah. No, absolutely. But it 100%. took me, it took me so long to be okay with that, yeah. you know, because of the, the well, it's stigma. Not, it's not quote unquote normal. The stigma, society. you know? Right. And, and like, uh, I, I dyed my hair in July, red, white, and blue for, for <laughs> 4th of July because I, I was in D.C., right? Yeah. Uh, my nieces talked me into it, right? We went for Manny Petties, and I got a Petty or yeah. a Manny. 16 and- Bud, Bud, Budweiser's <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> so I had red, white, and blue hair, and uh, then I went to visit my dad. And I get off the motorcycle and I take my helmet off. I hadn't told him oh, about he it. Shit. And he goes, "Great, we've got dinner at the country club tonight." And I'm like, <laughs> "Sorry, Dad." And then we're walking into the country club, and he goes, "This is my son with the colorful hair." I'm like, <laughs> "They can see it's colorful. You don't have to point it out." Like, <laughs> but yeah, it's they don't under the second they don't, second guess we have with colorful hair. Yeah, it's true. What's that? Second guess with call for hair, Dirty Randy. Well, his, his oh, his Dirty hair. Randy, yeah. Well, his hair's not called for hair. Not, not, right not now, anymore. Randy. Not no. right now, but well, it was. Well, I, I went back. I, I dyed it black and f- messed it all up, and it was horrible. And I, <laughs> I had to go to a salon and have her fix it. <laughs> so I spent 150 bucks for it to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this looks like shit. You got to do something for me. Um, and that was actually pretty crazy, too. You know, it's fate. Everything, yeah. everything on this trip has seemed like it happened for a reason. And when, like I said, when I got to Indiana, um, I stayed in that hotel. And then the next morning, I found out that a friend of mine had died. And he was he was a, a fellow DJ. He did karaoke nights uh, here in Massachusetts. And um, it was it was it was really hard for me. Like I spent that day just in bed, and I ended up extending my stay at the hotel an extra night, which I really couldn't afford, but I needed it because mentally I couldn't get on the bike. I just couldn't ride. And uh, the next day I got on the road and I decided to get my hair done because like, apparently that's what I do when I'm sad. Could be worse. So I, uh, I stopped at this place right on the border uh, of Indiana and Ohio. And uh, I went to the salon and this, this girl helped me out. And she was like, yeah, we can get you in and do this, that, whatever. I get in the chair and I'm looking at the mirror and there's this little postcard and it's this uh, fl- basically a flyer and it says our our stylist that works here uh, had a great tragedy to her family in 2014 her 12 year old committed suicide oh Jesus and I just like it like it overwhelmed me when I read it and I looked at the girl doing my hair and I said what in the world would commit would would even yeah. come into a 12 year old's mind to make them want to do that and she said, yeah, that was my daughter. Wow. Ooh. She was, you know, she was the one who, who lost her daughter. And, wow. And, uh, and I said, I just, I just lost my friend a few days ago. And we, we actually sat there and cried together. Um, it was a really powerful moment. Like, and it was like, I didn't have to go in. I, I'd actually gone to another place to try and get it done, and they didn't have anybody that could do it. And then I went into this place. So it was like, it's it's just, universe at work it's, yeah. yeah it's the universe has been working this whole trip and what it is is i just let go i haven't tried to control any of this you know what i mean yeah things have happened and un- and unfortunate things have happened and and awesome wonderful things have happened but i just take it each day and you know obviously when i heard my friend had passed my my instinct was to come back and for the services so those are wednesday you know in a couple of days and uh, we're going to celebrate, you know, his life and try and raise some money for his daughter. Um, Is there any, like, uh, GoFundMes or anything people can uh Yeah, there's actually. Uh, so if you just check out my Facebook page, uh, which is. Yeah, at, well, you give all your social media contacts yes. while we're on it. So um, on Instagram, I'm at the Rob G, uh, and it's the R-O-B-G-E-E. And on Facebook... I got to pull it up because it was – and now my phone's dead. I think it's Rob um, G anyway. No, it's not. No. It's I tried to get Rob G, and I think somebody had it. It's actually Rob Gent 
What you should do is make a Vagabond Rob piece. So that's actually what I was going to say. Yeah, I, yeah, I was actually going to try and do that earlier, but my and phone kept dying. We'll, we'll promote it for you. Yeah, no. So so check out, you know, just keep an eye out for Vagabond Rob. If you check me out on Facebook, if you check out the Street Corner Soapbox, you yes. can just check out the comments, and I'm always Absolutely. commenting. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> well, by the time this, we'll this, have links to by the time this episode is out, video. maybe your, your page, page will be up. up you yep, know what I'm saying? Yep. So just look um, up Vagabond Rob, and I'll make sure that anything uh, as far as, you know, his – his family, you know, we're definitely trying to raise some some money for them. We're doing a celebration of life actually in Holbrook. Um, is this going to air before then or after? When is it? Wednesday. No, it'll probably be. It'll okay. be after. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No worries. Um, so yeah, uh, vagabond Rob, check me out on on social media. I'll be on Instagram under the same name because I'm pretty sure it's not taken yet by, <laughs> by anybody. Even if it is, man. Uh, even you're if you're the is, true vagabond at this point. Yeah. Absolutely. Even if it is, we'll change it. To I'd Gypsy. like to meet another Rob that's doing what you're doing. We'll change it to Gypsy if we need to. <laughs> Gypsy Rob. Yeah. Um, and any any uh, shout outs you want to give to anybody? Um, I think I've given them all. Like, yeah. As, yeah. You did. As you did. we went along, I any tried any to... words of advice for anyone aspiring to do what what you, you're doing right now? Just be you. Just do you. Just, That's the real shit. Just, mm-hmm. like, don't ignore the static, right? Um, that's kind of my motto these days is ignore the static because that was another thing with me getting on the road was, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an empath. You know, I, I, have, I get affected by the way people around me feel. Um, if you're really, really down, it's going to affect the way that I feel. And right now the country's really, really down. Right. And the world is really, really down. And it starts to affect us. And I don't even think anybody's talking about the suicide rate in this country right now. Right now it's I've heard some things about that. It spiked almost twenty percent over the last two years. It's insane. Yeah. And nobody's talking about it because everybody's so focused on the politics and and the bullshit and the static. Right. So all my only advice to anybody is just ignore the static. Do you make sure that you're happy. And if you have loved ones in your life, you know, make sure they're happy. But if if they step on you, don't be afraid to walk away, you know. Be True sure. words. And if you're not happy, don't be afraid to say so, you know. You got to you gotta be happy for you. Oh, yeah. You know. Real real talk, man, as they say. Yeah, man. Well, thank you for coming yeah, down. I, I really I mean, appreciate you guys. No, nah, man, I'm glad. I'm glad I, I, I pitched the idea to Chris and then to you. And, um, I, I mean, you, have, you definitely have a fucking crazy story. I've seen it firsthand your transition and i'm happy for you i love you brother thank you for coming. we'll have to have you back yeah, uh next absolutely time you come around and tell us about recap your or next we'll, journey or we'll do some road updates yeah oh, no yeah, yeah we're, <laughs> gonna, we're gonna work on that too no definitely that'd be cool but we'll have you back either way that was, uh, good, that, was that was great man awesome, so thank bro. you for coming on bro vagabond rob, vagabond rob. Off. don't forget street corner soapbox.com follow us on all yep. social and media don't forget patreon 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 dot com slash street corner underscore soapbox 2020 subscribe and support the show thank Absolutely. you very much make sure you take care of these guys working yeah, hard for yeah. you and check out be on the lookout for that vagabond rob uh, social media all right all right we're out <laughs>